Is there anyone in MMA with worse hair than Josh Koscheck? <laughs> oh, man. What up, Fightful fam? Shaquille Madjuri here. And you know this, man. He is a beast of a welterweight fighter, multi-division challenger. And every time I improve my set, he has to one-up me. He's got colored lights in here now. John Fitch, what's going on, my man? I'm, I'm doing good, man. You gotta, you gotta always improving. You're always improving. Yes. If you're if you're not growing, you're dying. I love it. In the cage and outside the cage. Congratulations right. on getting rid of your quarantine hair. I saw an yes. interview you did in June, July, and it was getting kind of out of hand, if I'm being honest. Uh, well, I just had, I have a sponsor, um, Fisticuffs. Fist of Cuts up in Portland. My friend Robo drove down. He actually helped uh, oh, really? smuggle my puppy to me. Um, and uh, he cut my hair. So this is a fresh Fist of Cuts haircut right now. What kind of puppy? A Pressa Carnario. You it's lost a, me. It's, a, it's also referred to as a Canary Mastiff. That's okay. I have, ooh, see, oh, you got a Mastiff. So we're getting... So he's going he, to... Oh, he's, a, he's, he's 12 weeks old. He's 33 pounds. Oof. Mine, mine's, and it's so funny to watch him just walk around because he's like he hasn't figured it out. <laughs> it's like, falls it's like down. Fl floppy puppy walk. Floppy. He's got yeah. huge paws, dude. Like his, I got my hands are pretty decent size, but he's his hand, his paws are almost as big as my hand. It's crazy. Um, my uncle had a mastiff. Is he still like all loose skin at this point? Like he hasn't like fully. Their breed anything. is not very loose skin. Okay. Cool, yeah. cool. Yeah, I've got a Formosan Mountain Dog that I adopted mm. last year from Taiwan. So I got having the out there breeds um now speaking of hair before we get to the fight at hand you take on neiman gracie at bell tour 246 <clears throat> on september 12th uh, i saw you post a throwback thursday photo with josh koscheck is there anyone in mma with worse hair than josh koscheck <laughs> oh man i you know what though i used to have i had blonde hair like back in college for a while that was that was pretty crazy like there's actually a picture of it in my book Filling up with my ego, or my it's like all puffed out, but um, yeah, that was uh, I don't know, man. O'Malley's hair is pretty bad, <laughs> O'Malley's hair is pretty bad, <laughs> it's pretty bad too, man. <laughs> well, you know, it's not even so much the rainbow that bothers me with Sean, so much as it is like the cornrows and stuff that he does just doesn't <laughs> doesn't suit him, I don't think. But you know what? I like, listen, I had the I know, mean, hair up it's front the name with of the, the game, blonde though. under dye back in the yeah. day, so I get I mean, it. It's the name of the game, though. It's not really a true sport. Like, a lot of the shenanigans on the outside matter more than the actual performance in the cage. So, like, you know, I, you can't really knock a guy for, like, doing something to stand out for and sure, raising his sure. notoriety level, you know. Well, hey, they don't have to worry about getting bullied about it outside of the cage, so. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about the fight. Uh, you take on Neiman Gracie. He fought Roy McDonald recently. You fought Roy McDonald recently. I know the MMA math doesn't add up, but is there anything you can extrapolate from comparing the two fights? Just that, you know, he's he's a really great positional jiu-jitsu player, mm -hmm. but if you're competent in, in cutting off those positions and staying in a dominant position like Rory did, you can, you can avoid a lot of the trouble. Okay, so I, as someone who's known to have a phenomenal wrestling background, I take it that means you are not afraid of trying to take down even Gracie. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not worried about getting in. I'm not even worried about getting in bad positions. I think that I'm skilled enough to where if something were to happen and I got put into a bad position, I'm skilled enough and and crafty enough and treacherous enough to escape. Uh, what was youth, it? Youth and beauty versus age and treachery. Always ah, bet, yeah, you're not always a bad bet on guys. agent well, treachery. Neiman, Neiman is a beautiful man, but you know, don't sell yourself short, John. Uh, you got the fresh cut and everything. Um, I know at some point we had talked about, you know, you're thinking about kind of like wrapping up the career, and then la I was looking back at an article we did for Bloody Elbow last year, and you're saying that you were back to having fun with it again. And mm. when we talked earlier, you mentioned that I know you t I know you told Sure Dog that you want to get in a bunch of fights in 2020. What was sort of the tipping point for you where you're like, I'm still enjoying this? And is there anything in particular about the Neiman Gracie fight that was attractive? Just the fact that he is, it's a good matchup. He's really tough, but it's a very winnable fight, uh, you know. Um, but he's got a great name. Mm -hmm. I don't have to explain, I, somebody who's a casual fan or doesn't even watch the sport, I don't have to explain who I'm fighting. Yep. That And that's always a plus. And at my age, in this stage of my career, <laughs> If, unless you're gonna throw a bunch of extra money at me, 
if 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 I have to explain to people who I'm fighting, not super. Like it's not it's not yeah. it's not really worth it. Like because it's again it's not really a sport. So it's not like I have a ranking that if I would beat this guy, I get his yeah. ranking and I move up. That's not a real thing. It's not like oh if I take this challenge of some unnamed guy, I'm gonna get paid more. That's not doesn't happen. So like there's no incentive. Has has because uh, uh, you every time we talk uh, you mention the lack of sport in MMA, whether prompted or unprompted. For you at this point, has sort of accepting that reality made it easier for you to just enjoy fighting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, because I, I've embraced the idea of sales. Mm-hmm. I used to I used to be really anti sales, and that's really what a lot of those people, Sean O'Malley's hair, and that's what those guys yeah, are doing. Yeah. It's part of sales. You know, they're 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 just. Um, doing extra stuff to raise their notoriety because higher notoriety means more eyeballs and you get paid more and more opportunities. I've just embraced the idea of, you know, my, my social media has, has ticked up a lot. I've, I've just on Instagram alone. I've gone from, I think it was in January. I was at 12,000 followers. I'm at almost 25 right now, I'm knocking on the door at 25. So that, and that's just been like, um, me that's not like a promotion i haven't had a fight in that time i haven't had a promoter pushing me i haven't had anybody doing anything for me other than me and my team doing stuff and producing content so like i i I see more uh buzz more momentum more opportunities come off of that and it's 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 it's, it is what it is you can cry and, and bitch about it and moan about it or you can you can roll with it lean into it and and try to profit off of it hey fair enough uh so since you mentioned, you know, taking fights that sort of appeal to you in terms of name value and monetary value, uh, there's a very hot prospect. I think he's 24-0, Yaroslav Amosov, said that there were plans for you two to fight and fell through for whatever reason. No Do you have plans. any insight into that? No plans. They offered me uh, Neiman mm-hmm. first a while ago, but then even Neiman got sick. So they had to wait. And it was like, well, you can fight three weeks against this guy and they were like and, and like my weight there's no way I was gonna make weight yeah. it was August fight I was no way <laughs> like I I'm finally down to like 185 and I'm I'm super lean right now I've I in that time off because I thought I was retiring I was doing nothing but lifting and eating mm-hmm. uh, I wasn't like fat and eating junk food I was eating good food but I was I was like over it. I was over fighting I was just gonna get healthy I was working on like shoulder mobility I got rings in the garage and I'm like I have more shoulder mobility than I've ever had just from like hanging from these things and putting myself in different positions. Um, my body's really been healing up and uh, with a lot of the stuff, you know, I've been doing the past year to, to just kind of do my workouts. I haven't been grappling or, or sparring, so my body feels great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I put on probably five to seven pounds of lean muscle in that time. So I was in April, I was 218. I, I can relate to almost everything you're saying except for healing, lean muscle, <laughs> lifting. <laughs> it's basically just been the eating and junk food. The eating, yeah. Yeah. So or- like I yeah, and like like you know, my I have my book, The Wake Up Bible. I have my meal plan in there. And I just I stuck to the the the, the meal plan. I didn't really eat a lot of other garbage. I mean, there was some snacks, uh, you know, jumping into the kids' snacks every once in a while. Yeah, but like sure, yeah, I yeah. ate fairly clean. The only real sugar I was having was my whiskey. Um Part but, of any you know, great, part of any weight, great weight loss yeah, diet. Yeah, any sir. weight loss program. <laughs> and I was having my, you know, weights, whiskey, and you know, uh, Wednesdays. <laughs> I just got to add some wins to that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then I just, you know, Crazy Bob actually called me up and said, you know, Bellator is probably going to start doing shows at the end of July, and this was probably end of May, beginning of June, and. I was like, oh, okay. I was like, I guess I might as well. I was like, put me on the, put me in the, whatever, put my name in. I was like, might as well. Let's get back at it. And, you know, I had already, I was already three whiskeys deep uh, when he called. And I, and uh, I got off the phone with him and I, I did a 30 minute bike sprint workout. <laughs> so let, let's say, uh, let's say you, you beat Neiman Gracie. They come back to you with Yaroslav Amosov, not the most familiar name to fans. For you I mean, at this point, is it got to be a big sum of money to... Are they going to pay me more? Yeah, fair enough. So, no, like, fair enough. so, 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 so yeah, because like, yeah. this happens in boxing, right? If you're in boxing and you have a higher rank and a bigger name, the guy that people don't know has to pay you for the opportunity to fight for your rank. Well, that does, doesn't happen at MMA. Yeah. So like, what, what's, the, what's the payoff for me? Yeah. Because even beating him, it doesn't guarantee me a title shot because it's not a sport. There's no rank. I don't move forward. 
like what what's the appeal yeah, I, I mean completely get fighting it. a really tough guy that'd be great that's cool but like again it's not a sport so like why uh, you, you can't you, it's one or the other make a decision the fans need to make a decision too do you really want a sport or do you want uh uh some just like freak show where it's pro wrestling without predetermined outcomes which one is it fair enough sir as we start wrapping up here um you you were responding to uh Faraz Zahabi's criticism a while back about PED use and you explained you know you're going through a lot in your personal life you thought you needed something that you didn't have and I know you're not there clearly you I, had, I had people in my ear too tell me yeah. about like I can't believe you haven't you haven't done this everybody's doing this and then they're telling me about people that I know around me that are, are doing, doing it, it and yeah. I'm like oh wow and then people that I respect and like looked up to are doing it and they're like hey I, I have the same dealer I get the same stuff that he gets is the culture <laughs> and, still like that not to name um, names. I'm just curious in general. No, I mean I, I I don't know because I'm I'm kind of isolated. Yeah. Like I'm I'm training in my garage and and spending most time with my kids in this in this past year or whatever. And um, I'm not around any of the people. You know, I haven't been around any of those people who are into that uh, for years. Yeah. So I, I'm not I'm not real sure. I don't I don't know what's going on in that in that realm because I don't I'm not a big believer in it. At least not the way I was doing. I think if you have to if you do you have to do enough of testosterone. Uh, to get uh, positive, uh, any type of positive benefits, like you're going to put on weight and you're not going to be able to fight in the same weight class. Well, and so the reason I brought it up is because uh, you, you had told me about how you, when you were writing your book, you were going through your old journals and stuff and it kind of rekindled why you got into the sport and you kind of got back to having fun. What is your advice for other fighters who feel like they're kind of lost or stuck in their MMA journey? You need to focus on, on, the path on what you're doing right now and and have fun with it do the right things that will lead you to where you need to go but like it's a really hard skill to adopt but you have to have outcome independence okay you have to be willing to sacrifice everything and put everything into this outcome and if you don't get it you're fine <laughs> you have to be okay with that because things pop up you might have some other thing uh takes you a different direction you know, uh, you wanted to be a, a lead guitarist for a band and you'd put in all this work and, and then when a push came to shove, you had an opportunity to be a producer mm -hmm. rather than sticking it out and forcing yourself to be a rock star. But now you, you, you slide into this producer position. It's awesome. You love it and you make tons of money and you make tons of music, even though you're not the lead guitar player. So like having this ability to put everything into a goal, moving forward to one place, but being willing to like, oh, hey, look at this opportunity and going with it. And then uh, just being aware that the path, the path is what it's about. It's not about the end point. Agreed, agreed. I think pivoting is super important. Um, it's a good way of pivoting, yeah. Yeah, John, listen, man, uh, you're a highly talented fighter and no one doubts that very underrated speaker as far as i'm concerned you fight neiman gracie at bellator 246 on september 12th thank you as always for making time for me and i'll catch you on the flip side awesome man check out uh johnfish.net sign up for the newsletter i got uh, free courses and stuff available do it right now meal plan on there or is that in the book only um well, you know the meal plan might even be in my my blog stuff but i use the same meal plan on a few different things it's in the neck care guide because it's a part of you know cutting down on inflammation and keeping my joints healthy. Um, you know, I list my uh, supplements on, on, on my website too, but it's also part of the, the, the net care guide. So like I've got, you know, it's the same information. I put it out there in different ways. Everything you're saying feels like exactly what I need. So I'll make sure to check it out. You do too. Discipline, man. It's all about discipline. Yes, sir.